if i go to a service like tinyurl.com i paste this and click on submit it gives me a short url two hours later Okay, so today we'll see how to do system designing for URL shortener or this in an interview can also be asked as how to design a URL shortener. So in case if you're not aware, what is a URL shortener? Then a URL shortener is nothing but this is a service which is available online and can create short URLs for uh, long URLs. So example will be, let's say channel URL for this channel right now is very big, which is this. Now, if I go to a service like tinyurl.com, I paste this and click on submit it gives me a short url so this short url which when clicked will redirect me back to this url so this is the url shortener system in simplicity now in order to design a url shortener we need to understand what are these kind of requirements which are there first we'll see what are the functional requirements in order to understand functional requirement we must understand that how a url shortener works so we should be aware that when given a url this url shortener service which we are going to design should be able to generate a short url or in other words some sort of alias for it which we call it as short link second when the user clicks on this short link the url shortener should redirect them to the original url third we should also give that option to user that they can create some custom url so for example if i would have wanted a custom url like https tinyurl.com slash design strong then it should allow me to fetch that url as well or select that url if it is available also one must expire those links after let's say a standard span of time let's assume that uh, for simplicity this span is going to be one year by default whereas user will have uh, the ability to modify this expiration so this, these are the four functional requirements that one must know while designing a url shortener in a tech interview next there are some extended requirements which can be discussed between the interviewer and the interviewee uh, asking if there are uh, requirements of advanced features such as analytics so analytics comes into picture generally when let's say behind the short url we do a plus and if the user is login then we'll see how many users have clicked on this link or how in another term how many times this url has redirected to the original url second let's say if we want to expose apis for uh, our system for url shortener then we should be able to do it so these are two extended requirements that we, that we will take up and apart from this there will be non-functional requirements non-functional requirements for generally for large scale systems remains same but then the sort of requirements will always change now first is a url shortener as a system should be highly available why because if the service is down that means all the redirections will start failing so let's say if you, some user might have used this sort of url in their system then the redirections will fail which will mean that they'll not trust the system second url redirection should happen in real time with minimal latency which means that the service should be fast enough that user should not be able to feel any sort of lag like if they click on url which is shortened then let's say it is taking two seconds or three seconds to open so this sort of latency should not be there and third one should not be able to guess the next url which should be generated so uh, what does that mean is that the last part of the url should be unique and should not be guessable now we'll see high level uh, estimates for the system because high level estimates are generally very important when we try to understand a system so first while deciding sort of architecture do we need or what sort of requirements are there we should do a capacity estimation for such questions so in capacity estimations what we do is we decide whether our system is a read heavy or write heavy or both so in this case this is going to be a read heavy system why because let's say if one user is creating a tiny url or a short url for a big url then there will be more users who will be clicking on it for simplicity let's assume that this is going to be in the ratio of let's say 100 is to 1 similarly we need to do traffic estimations so in traffic estimations let's assume that there will be 500 million urls which will be shortened every month now this generally happens in terms of a uh, discussion between the interviewer and interviewee and one should always ask for inputs as well like uh, what sort of uh, traffic are we estimating here and based on that we can decide the scale that we need to go on so in this case if we have to shorten 500 million urls then let's do some ref calculation for it which means that we need to do 100 is to 1 is there that means 100 times this 500 million URLs 
barrels will be there which means 50 billion times in a month i need to do redirections so based on that we need to uh, decide what will be query per second so 500 million by 30 days into 24 hours into 3600 which means every second there will be approximately 200 urls which needs to be redirected similarly the ratio was 100 is to 1 for read is to write so that would mean that 50 billion reads will be there and which would mean that 90k per second approx is the redirections which will happen so 200 urls will be newly introduced into the system per second and there will be 19,000 urls which will be requested per second so this is a simple sort of traffic estimations one can go with rough figures as well in case if we don't want to get into this sort of calculation into the interview next is storage estimation storage estimation is very important because we need to decide what sort of scale we should work on and uh, how much of database uh, size etc we should consider so let's assume that every url is we are going to keep it in for five years we are expecting 500 million urls as we stated above every month which would mean that what we are expecting is let's say if we are deciding for five years then the, we will have 30 billion urls approx in our system and if we assume that there is approximately 500 by which is being used in our system for every URL being shortened and stored we will need 15 TB of total storage so 15 terabytes means can fit into one single system so from that basis also we can decide whether to use a SQL or a NoSQL database looking at this sort of size at least from the size only perspective I can say that yes this can fit into a single system heavy size one so if the requirement fits in rdbms should work fine something like a postgres or let's say in case if you are working on different stack an oracle or a microsoft sql server will also work in this case memory estimations so memory estimations is important to decide how are we going to utilize the cache in case if you have joined this channel right now i strongly recommend that if you look at the video related to cache that we did last week which was related to lru cache because that will give you idea about how does a cache work and here also Similarly, we'll follow 80-20 rule, which means that 20% of the URLs will be generating 80% of the traffic because some of the URLs will be uh, more popular than other and will be having more traffic than other. So in general, we what we will want is we'll cache these 20% URLs which are generating 80% of traffic, which would mean that with this approach, we are catering down the requirement of low latency. Now, because we have like around 19,000 requests per second, which we saw and 1.7 billion requests per day, so which would mean that we need to store 20% of those into a cache. So cache approximately will need 20% of 1.7 billion into 500 bytes, 170 GB of a cache. Frankly speaking, this is a bit high for a cache, but looking at the overall size of the system, this looks okay to me, but then we need to utilize one of the good cache eviction policies here to understand uh, the system better. So overall, let's see what are the high level estimates that we have come across so high level estimates are for 500 million urls per month 100 is to 1 read write ratio we have new urls which will be coming in at 200 new urls per second redirections will be happening at let's say 19,000 new redirections per second incoming data for these will be 100 kb per second and outgoing will be 9 mbps so this is typically 9 mbps and 100 kbps is fine so uh, this would mean that a sort of t3 medium in case if you are working with amazon web services uh, should be fine for handling this requirement and uh, let's say if we are using a multi cluster which is of course needed uh, to avoid single point of failure then we can have a cluster of same and storage for five years is going to be around uh, 15 terabytes because we have done that estimation already so in so in case our database is increasing in five years to 15 tv this is pretty normal so rdbms at least till now is fine memory for cache is of course 170 gb there we can utilize a good cache such as redis two hours later so for the same system, this is how the system APIs that we are working as an additional requirement for designing a URL shortener uh, will work. So what we have done is we have created two simple REST APIs which can be used for creating and deleting URLs. Create URL will look like uh, this. It will have six parameters, one API dev key. This is nothing but a dev developer key which can be used uh, to ensure that only the authorized users are able to utilize our API and also throttle if needed. Throttling is nothing but constraining the number of requests that one user can send so that your API does not get down in case of a request abuse. Next is original URL. So original URL will consist of the URL that needs to be shortened. Custom URL uh, will be optional. So custom URL will be sent by user only if 
they need a custom url otherwise it will be empty so we have this set defaulted to none username again will be optional username uh, is optional because uh, if username is being sent then that will be used for encoding otherwise it is not why it is used we'll come to that uh, in a bit uh, expired date expired date is also ex uh, uh, optional in case if uh, user is not providing that date we'll set it to default which is five years and in case if it is provided then we'll set it a uh, desired and once this api is successful we'll return a string in form of a shortened url otherwise we'll return some sort of http error based on what whatever is missing similarly delete url uh, is very simple it will have api dev key and the url key which needs to be removed successful deletion will return a success talking about db schema for creating a url shortener we'll only need two tables one is for storing information of url mappings and another one for uh, user data who have created the short url uh, why do we need this because there can be situation where uh, same url has been shortened by two users two hours later Similarly, uh, if we need to understand or if we need to consider what sort of database we should use, uh, right now, based on size, till now we have uh, anticipated that an RDBMS would work. But because here we can see that it is only URL to URL mapping or some sort of a key value or database. So in this case, NoSQL such as Dynamo or Cassandra can also work because uh, these are simple key value store and uh, scaling is not a problem at all with NoSQL. So, uh, while we are saying that we can work with NoSQL, it's not like the only solution. We can also work with uh, an RDPMS here. Algo and system design. So Algo and system design for a URL shortener will work like one, we encode a URL. So we need to compute a unique hash for the given URL. When we do a hash, it means that for incoming URL, all we are doing is calculating this hash and the hash is nothing but let's say if we are only providing option of using A to Z and 0 to 9, then we'll do a base 36 encoding or if in case we are allowing capital and small and 0 to 9 then we can do a base 62 let's say if we additionally allow a hyphen and a dot then we can do a base 64 encoding easily then the next question is how much should be the length of a url shortener so uh, if we consider base 64 and we are considering a six letter key that would mean that 64 to the power 6 that is these are the possible strings that can be generated which is i think way more than what we need for five years so that should be fine and if you're using an eight letter long then it is in sort of 281 trillion strings that can be generated so for now i think six letter strong is good enough so that uh, the url is also uh, very short and 68.7 billion is way much than what we are anticipating in five years so for now let's assume that uh, for any in input url we'll create a key of six digits then we can also utilize md5 algorithm for uh, a hash function that we'll create so that uh, it creates a 128 bit hash value and then after base 64 encode Coding, we'll get a 24 characters and then we can remove the other characters and utilize the six characters which comes now because we are storing space for eight characters per short key the question is how will we choose what will be our key then what like i said we can uh, choose the first six or eight characters out of the 21 which were generated you might be thinking that there can be duplication yes it can be there but then uh, because we are having a key value sort of data store generally in case if that key already exists we can certainly like negate that or let's say swipe one or two keys there or another uh, mechanism and this is very good this is what i have seen in real time that the actual systems are using so what they do is they have a key generation service so key generation service would mean that they'll have uh, a service which is running on their own and its job is only to create those six digit unique letters and it will store it in a database and this database will uh, send us one key at a time so we need not let's say do this operation on real time all we do is incoming url get a key and uh, save them into the database so this is very simple and this is also uh, helping in removing the or like let's say minimizing the latency issues every system has their own issues and uh, so is our design so the first question which can be an issue is that let's say if multiple users are entering same url how can we shorten this url and uh, if we are uh, creating hash both the users will have get the same hash in the mechanism that we have seen first uh, second is uh, there can be same urls which can be uh, sent by two users in different format let's say abc.com slash some parameter and abc.com slash encoded parameter both are identical in case if you are aware but for our system both are uh, different urls so solution is what we can do is we can append an increasing url in case if uh, 
the same URL has been like if, if same URL has been uh, encoded by more than one people and then create a hash which can be used. Of course, we need, need not store this in database because uh, the solution will remain same. It's just to uh, negate the duplicacy of data, which we will see. And this is how the uh, overall design for a system at high level will look like. A client is sending requests to shorten a URL to server. Server, what is what it is doing is uh, it's sending a request to encoding service. So encoding service is running on, let's say, a multi-cluster sort of environment. And uh, it then returns an encoded URL and also stores this value into the database for further usage. And this shortened URL is returned. And now when the reverse happens, all it is uh, doing is client sends a shortened URL to the server. It fetches the same directly from database and provides it back. So this was a uh, simple design for a URL shortener. I hope you like it. Thank you. Khatam. Bye bye. Tata. Goodbye. Gaya.